When you buy Kroger brand products, you feel like you're winning. That's because they offer proven quality at lower than low prices. In fact, we guarantee that you and your family will love how Kroger brand products taste. Or you get your money back. So next time you're shopping for the family, look for delicious Kroger brand products. Because they'll make you all feel like you're winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Stay connected and never miss a beat with AT&T. Our reliable network covers more roads than any other carrier, ensuring you're always in the loop. Whether it's tournament upsets, buzzer beaters, or social media buzz, stay up to date. Don't let the action pass you by. Check if you're eligible for a free trial of in-car Wi-Fi at att.com slash in-car Wi-Fi. And keep the madness going. Always pay careful attention to the road and don't drive distracted. Wi-Fi hotspot intended for passenger use only when vehicle is in operation. Compatible device and vehicle required. It's time to get inside the Giants home. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On Giants.com. I like it, I like it, I like it. And the Giants mobile app. Give me some juice. Part of the Giants podcast network. Let's roll. Welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. Podcast brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York Football Giants. I am John Schmelk, joined by friend of the program, Chris Bizignano. He covers the Giants for Giants Insider. Chris, it's always good to see you, man. How you doing? Good, good, John. How you doing, man? Thank you for having me back on, man. Busy no, time absolutely. of year, brother. Busy time I, of year. Yeah, I know. I, I haven't seen you in a bit. Uh, good to talk to you, Chris. Before we get started, tell the folks where they can find all your work. At Giant Insider on X and the Giant Insider podcast and newspaper, um, the bi-weekly newspaper. So, uh, and at Giant Insider, like I said, on X. John, look, um, I guess we're going to get into it. A lot of stuff going on. Owners meeting, right? Shane, Dable speaking and uh, the draft coming up, man. Get into it. I know you want to get into it hard. So let's yeah. start it up. Also, John Mara spoke down there as well. Um, yeah. I'm sure the fans out there that are listening to this saw a lot of the quotes. What were your biggest takeaways from what was said down there at the owners' meetings? You know, something that really annoys me, John, I, I say it all the time, that so many people feel that John Mara runs the draft and tells Dable and Joe Shane, this is the way it's going to be, guys. You run everything by me. I'll let you know if it's good and this and that. And basically, John had to say, listen, if that's if the Joe Shane and Dave's want to go with a quarterback at six, God bless them. It's their show, right? Basically, that's what they're saying. Um, and John left it out there and he let people know that hey, it's a possibility and it's up to them if they want to trade up, if they want to trade back, whatever it might be, it's just gonna be Joe Shane's show, as it should be, and it always has been, you know. And I I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, John. A lot of people have this perception of John Mara runs everything and all that stuff. But once again, you got to come out and say, hey, you know, this is their show and they're going to do what they feel they have to do to improve this team. If that's a quarterback at six or four or three or whatever it might be, then so be it. Yeah. And and to your point, Chris, that's the way it's always been done. I know fans. Absolutely. You know, I, th- I don't know how I'm sure you see it on, on Twitter as well or X, whatever you want to call it, that. You know, there's no way Joe Shane gives that contract to Eli, to uh, Daniel Jones on his <laughs> yeah. own without John Mara making him do it. Guys, I hate to tell you, uh, that's exactly what happened. You know, John Mara mentioned this at the owners meetings. He has, you know, so many grandkids with Saquon jerseys. You know, it would have been the easiest thing in the world to just pay Saquon. Everyone would have been happy. Most of the fans would have been happy. But Joe Shane didn't think that was the right thing to do. And the Mara family allows the people that they hire to run the organization from the head coach to the general manager to make these decisions. Mr. Mara pointed out that if he's asked his opinion, he will give it. But in the end, the decision is left to the people in charge. And uh, that's how this is going to go. And that's how it's always gone. And I think it's important for fans to understand that. John, I try to express that message to people don't want to hear it, (laughs) but it's the facts. Hey, look, John. When when Dave Gettleman drafted Tony, John said a few times to Dave. I noticed for a fact. John said a few times to Dave. He said, "You sure about this? You sure about that?" Gettleman says, "Yeah, yeah." You know, and he went on draft. I mean, if John was a very influential owner, where he was his way out, like you said, Barkley would still be a giant right now. Hey, 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 Joe. My kids got the my grandkids got Saquon. I want him here. You pay him no matter what, and he would still be a giant. But that's not the way it works yet. I know people just don't want to hear that, but that's the facts. Um, and by the way, Chris, just real quick, I'll even go back even further. If John Mara was really the one making all these decisions, do you think they would have benched Eli Manning for Geno Smith? 
<laughs> but I'm serious. No, no. And 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 he said after the fact that I, he probably should have had more control over the situation, but he let Jerry Reese and Ben mm -hmm. McAdoo do what they thought was right. Yep. And that's just how he yeah. operates. He's yeah. involved. He knows what's going on. He's at practice. He's in team meetings, as he mentioned. But in the end, the decision makers are going to make these decisions. Absolutely. And and, and look, like John says, I may, I might get involved a few times if it's all field issues or something like that. That's very rare, right, John? Um, but he doesn't. He lets his football people look. John Marrow wants to win. I, once again, I know people don't want to hear this. They think, oh, he's just sitting for the money. John Marrow wants to win more than anybody. I'm with, I see him after games. If you do, John, I'm sure he doesn't, you know, nobody takes these losses harder than him, brother. You know, Chris, so. is, is there anything worse than if it's a lopsided game at halftime and you're going to the bathroom in the press box yeah. and John Mara's, he watches the game basically from the yeah, press he's box. Pissed. He's and pissed. you walk yeah. past him and it, it, it's not the best. And yeah. uh, he cares. He, he cares deeply about yeah. whether the team wins or loses. A couple other topics uh, <laughs> from there, uh, Chris and, this is kind of what we've been saying on our shows, too, and I'm not surprised that this is how, you know, Brian Dable, Joe Shane, and John Mayer talked about the quarterback position um, at the owners' meetings as well, that they expect Daniel to be the starter this year, assuming the rehab yes. uh, continues upon a schedule. Uh, but that doesn't mean if they think that there's someone special in the draft that they could acquire at the right price that they think can, as John Mayer put it, a franchise-type quarterback that can be your quarterback for a very long time. Uh, that they wouldn't pull the trigger on that. So uh, I think Paul Schwartz put it a, a few months ago in, in a story. He was on with us at the Combine, too. Not desperate to add a quarterback, but if they find someone that they think can you know be a special player at the position, they're more than willing to explore it. And they're investigating everything like they do every year because you never know right. when uh, this research and work you do on the quarterbacks is going to matter. Yeah, John, look, I've been saying this on my podcast and I've been writing about this, John, look, the quarterback is in a conversation with the Giants. It has been for months. Are they going to reach? Is it a desperate type mode? Absolutely not. Is there interest in drafting a franchise, so-called franchise quarterback? Absolutely. They're not doing all this work for nothing, John. We know that. We, they bring in these kids. They've interviewed them at the combine. Pro days. They brought in, they brought they brought these kids in the building. Okay, they've been in the building. So there's definitely an interest, no question about it. But Joe Shane and Brian Dable is not just going to draft a quarterback for the sake of drafting a quarterback. OK, they are going to look into these kids and if they like somebody and we don't know how they have them graded out. OK, I know a lot of people think they, uh, they try to pretend like they do know how these guys are graded out, but we don't. We don't know how these guys, you know, Joe Shane and Brian Dable might have Drake May graded out one way and another team like Vegas might have him graded out another way. And Chris, by the way, I don't think and Brian Dable basically said this. I don't think he's done doing his work on these quarterbacks either. Not even and close. Yeah. So they're not going to make a decision on this until their head coach, who is a quarterback whisperer and an offensive guy, gives his full opinion on the group. So, uh, and John Mara said this as well, that the owners means I think there's still a lot of work to do here on their decision. What I don't think they'll do is draft a guy that they have 25th on their board, even if he's <laughs> no. at the quarterback position, and pass it on another guy that is probably top five on their board in terms of overall grade. You know, probably not even a guy that's 17th on their board to not, you know, to draft a guy that's. Uh, top five on their board. So I, I, I'm i with you a thousand percent. Yeah, Joe, look, Joe, they're not going to reach. Joe Shane and Brian Dable know what the hell they're doing, okay? Especially Dable, okay? We all know his history with quarterbacks, all right? Uh, look, their draft board's not even remotely close to being finished. It's not even, probably hasn't even started or barely started, okay? So we don't know how these guys are grading these quarterbacks, okay? So every team, that's the that's the beauty of the draft. Teams evaluate different ways, okay? Uh, so we'll see how Shane and Dable, like you said, John, uh, uh, just an argument's sake, you know, say a, a Bo Nix, right? Dable and Shane might him, have him drafted second round level. I'm just, this is just an argument, okay? Where a team like Denver might have him up in a top 15 type grade, where they'll go with him. This is the beauty of the draft. Nobody know. I know people like to pretend like they know on Twitter and all that stuff, but nobody knows how these guys are going to grade these guys out. But what they are going to do, okay, that we know is that they're going to look at him. They're going to study them. They're going to evaluate the process. There's a whole month left to the draft, and every day I'm sure they're going to be doing that, looking into, besides quarterbacks, all these positions, but especially quarterback, because we know how important it is, and there's a good chance that Shane and Dable will be aggressive, either moving up or at six and taking one. But like you said, John, they're not going to take one just for the sake of taking one. It's going to be where they draft. 
their position and how they have these kids graded out. And that's the beauty of the draft. We just don't know that right now. Yeah, and it's a trade too. And I don't want to get too deep into the draft. We'll kind of circle back to this at the end. You know, this is a situation too, Chris, where you can't make this trade ahead of time, right? You know, it's very hard to trade up. Let's say the Patriots want to trade out, which I don't think they do, by the way. But let's just say in our hypothetical world that they are. If you trade up to three now, well, what happens if there's only one quarterback that you like other than Caleb Williams, right? right? And then right. Washington takes that guy. Well, then you're up, you know, what's Creek and there's nothing you can really do here. Uh, even worse, if you're trading up with the, the Chargers or the Cardinals, if they decide to get out. Well, then there might be one guy left. Well, what if that one guy that ends up being left is not the guy that you want to yes. pick? So this is something that might have to wait till draft night if they decide to, in fact, move up, which is what I'm interested to see what the Chargers do here and, and, those, and that team specifically because I really feel like they want to get out. How early are they able to execute that trade to get out? Can they find the team that is okay with any of the four quarterbacks? And they'll get out early. And then maybe the Giants aren't willing to make that move so early because they don't love all four guys or five guys. Maybe they have another guy in that category. Who knows? Maybe there's only three for them, whatever. So I think the type of you know process and machinations involved in this make it complicated in getting it done because you don't know. Don't know. When, who's going to be there and when this trade can even be executed. And it might give another team an advantage. Another thing too, and I don't mean to make it a super long question, but Maybe the Chargers would rather move down 10 spots, pick mm -hmm. up three extra picks, then move down one spot and just pick up one extra pick. You know, right. because the price of the Giants to move from six to five is going to be different than the Vikings for moving from, you know, what are they, 13? 11, right? 11, 11, 11 to, yeah. 11 to five. So Big all these different yeah. things are a factor here and what type of trade might be able to get done if, in fact, they end up wanting to make that type of move at all. Yeah, absolutely, John. I mean, it, it, look, Washington could turn around and – they, they could take a J.J. McCarthy and say, okay, we got this kid great. I mean, we all know J.J. stock is rising right now. I mean, that could change in the next month as we've seen with the draft. That's the beauty of the draft. It, people go up and down. But what if Washington turns around and says, oh, at, at pick number two, Washington goes with J Now, you know, the Giants could have just J.J. and, you know, and another kid like, oh, obviously Caleb's going to Chicago, so we'll leave him off the board. So, but, and now you that throws a whole wrinkle into everything, right? They might not have a Drake Bay in a top four grade, top five grade, top six grade. Or they might not have a, a genius. You know, it all depends on how these how they have these kids graded out. But like you said, that could throw a whole monkey wrench and everything. If Washington turns around and says, okay, at two, we're going to go J.J. McCarthy. Now, you know, so now you got to – but like you said, John, you know, you have to be ready to pull the trigger on these trades, and you just don't know what's going to happen, brother. What's up? I'm John Wall. And I'm C.J. Toledano, and we're starting a new podcast presented by DraftKings called Point Game. Everyone, please welcome Coach John Calipari. We're getting beat by 18. My first game in Kentucky. They're saying, Cal's a bust. He can't coach. This is crazy. John Wall runs down the floor and makes a buzzer beater. Yep. You remember that, John? That's my first game win I ever made. Remember you said you never seen me do that. Ladies and gentlemen, DeMarcus Boogie Cousins. I called Boogie. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm about to commit to Duke. And I hung up on him. <laughs> Bro, I'm talking about, do you want to tell me how many times he called me all type of names? Bro, you really sold me out. You doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was sick. I remember that like yesterday, man. Love you, John Wall. Thanks, Coach. Love you, too. You made me everything I am today. Nah, you made me. You made me. I love it. Check out Point Game with John Wall and CJ Toledano on the iHeartRadio app, DraftKings YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. It wasn't even supposed to be That's my That's my day. <laughs> You have to be ready. They're going to be prepared for this trade, this team, this team, this team. But you just don't know what's going to happen. You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows. Your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? So you have no idea. Yeah, hundred percent. So. And and we'll circle back to what the Giants might do in the draft in terms of players in a little bit. One other thing from the owners meeting. A couple other things here, Chris. A lot was made of the play calling questions that Brian Dable was asked, whether or not he'll take over play calling duties, what he did last year with play calling duties, why he did what he did, if he did what he did. And basically, Brian Dable went 20 minutes and gave non answers to all the questions because he doesn't, <laughs> yeah. which frankly, I don't, I, I, that's what I would do. He doesn't want to lock himself into a decision of what he's going to do if he hasn't really decided yet. Uh, mm -hmm. My guess is that we're not going to know until they line up in week one. Who's got the play yeah. sheet in front of him and who's going to call play. So if Giant fans are anxious to find out what the Giants are going to do, my guess is that it's going to take a while for them to figure this thing out. And, you know, 
I just think a lot is being made of, of him giving non-answers, and I just think this is going to be a wait-and-see proposition, Chris. Obviously, Shea Tierney got a promotion. Mike Kafka got a promotion. He likes both guys a lot. He has confidence in those guys. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but I don't think we're going to have a definitive answer on this thing for quite a long time. <laughs> Knowing Dave's the way I know him, John, we probably won't get that answer until the night before the, the last presser before the first oh, no, game. You guys will be in the press box with your binoculars trying to figure <laughs> out who's calling plays on the first drive of the season. I promise you that's what's going to happen. It, it's, it could very well be. I mean, look, Dave's is Dave's. We, uh, look, uh, we're all around him all the time. We, did a, we all did a thousand presses with him, and he's Dave's is going to be Dave's. He's not going to give you much, okay? So, But I do feel, you know, knowing Dave's, sometimes the way he gives answers, and um, I do feel he's in deep thought with this, and I think he wants to be that CEO. He doesn't want to lose that CEO presence. What I mean by that is that, Okay, so now you're calling the plays. Are you involved with the defense, special teams? No, I think Dave's doesn't want to be that, okay, I'm the offensive type head coach. I'm going to have the play sheet in front of me, and I'm going to be looking down when the defense is on the field because some guys do do that, okay? Especially, Chris, with a brand new special teams and defensive coordinator. Absolutely. You know, that's something he's probably going to want to keep right. an eye on, you know? Absolutely. So I think Dave's is he's going to really look at, like he said, he goes, you know, I'm going to look into this, the thought process is there. I'm going to look, you know, he wants to look into what other coaches do because there's a lot of coaches just call one side of the ball. Right. Uh, um, uh, but he doesn't want to lose that. Hey, I'm the CEO presence too. That's very important to Dave's. He wants to be the head coach, John, not just a coordinator. That's a head coach on paper. You get right. what I'm saying? Which we've mm -hmm. seen over the years with certain guys. Okay. So Dave's doesn't want to lose that. So he'll look into it. We'll see. Like you said, we're not going to get that answer. Well, we we could ask him, and I'm sure guys are going to ask him 3,000 times in training camp, and Dave's going to give the same answer <laughs> like he always does, and we'll find out, you know, in the first game of the year. So we'll see what he does. Yeah, and look, he said he likes to call plays. He misses calling plays. I think we know he's mm -hmm. good at calling plays. So uh, we'll, we'll see what that decision is. Again, I have no idea what they've what if he's decided yet, if he's still figuring it out. Whatever the situation might be, my guess is that he's still trying to figure it out. But I, I mean, he seems to me be a guy that would want to be that full head coach. And oh, absolutely. I, my yeah. guess is that he's going to have Kafka slash Shea Tierney call those plays. But I don't know. Again, that's just a yeah. guess on my part. I have no idea. Uh, that's just what my you know feel yeah. for the situation. Yeah, I, I'm is. sure he's maybe leaning one way right now in his decision, John. But he wants to really give it a full it, it, look. It's early in the game. There's no reason to even be talking about this now. I mean, you could bring it up, subject, but it's way too early for that type of stuff. Uh, and so, like I said, I'm sure he's thinking maybe leaning one way, but he's going to really look they Brian Dable's a sharp dude, bro. We all know that John, he is a sharp guy. Okay. And he doesn't do anything without thinking into it, thinking a long time into it. So that's what he'll do with this process. I'm sure. John Soto podcast is brought to you by citizens, the official bank of the New York giants from game day to every day citizens and made ready for giant fans with insights, guidance, and solutions. Learn more at citizensbank.com. All right, Chris, let's talk free agency here. This is like kind of part two of the show. Brian Martins, that was the big move, right? They basically mm. decided we're not going to pay money to Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney. We'll let them go. Well, the answer to that is we're going to take all that money and we're going to spend it on Brian Burns. Uh, and, of course, the toll they had to pay to get access to the player was the 39th overall pick, which I'm sure mm -hmm. killed Joe Shane to trade. You can get a really good player with that pick. Yep. But you're not going to get access to a – top pass rusher that's 25 years old like Brian Burns on the free agent market, you have to pay a toll to get access to him. The toll you had to pay was that second round pick. Uh, your yep. thought on that decision process to go uh, get Burns and yeah. the decisions not to, to return Saquon in and McKinney. Yeah, look, um, it's a premium position. That's the bottom line. Yep. And Joe's going to pay premium position guys, edge guys, something they feel, you know, they, they need to upgrade big time. And he did. You know, Brian Burns is one of the top guys on the edge. And, I, you know, I know a lot of people look at it and look, well, that's, oh, come on, Chris, he always had 12 and a half sacks his best year two years ago. But, but also Brian Burns has played not with the lead very much in the fourth quarter with Carolina. Okay, it's a whole different ball game. So he's one of the top, like you said, John, young. Man, what is he, 25? I mean, he's young. And they're going to pay a premium position. And obviously that affected guys like McKinney and Barkley. And here's the bottom line, and, and I've been talking about this. You know, running back and safety is not premium positions, okay? Edge guy is. The Giants felt they needed to upgrade the edge. They did. And they could put a very special package on the field now, especially if Aziz gives you 17 games, 14 games. Or he stay, let's just say he stays healthy. You know, you're looking at a very 
Heck, the way Shane Bone wants to do it with his four-man rush, you're looking at a very good four-man up front, man, on those third and fives and third and six, et cetera, okay? But, yeah, I, I, look, I like what he did. Joe's aggressive, man. You know, he's going to trade. We know that. We've seen it. He wanted his guy. He went out. Look, the beauty of this, John, is that, yeah, you know it killed Joe to give up that second round, but he also has another second round. So that's big, too. You know, that's big, too. So it's not like we get – there's no second-round pick. Um, they do have a second round pick a little bit later. Um, uh, but you have to do what you have to do sometimes, right? To get a guy like Brian Burns and Joe did, you know, and then you go out and you pay him. And I think they look at it like, okay, you know, we're gonna give up this collateral, but man, we are getting a guy that's in his prime that could get you double digit sacks every season, you know. And now you team him up with a guy opposite of a Thibodeau on the other side, Aziz, Dex inside, you know, all the whatever package Shane Bowen wants to put together. That's a pretty formidable unit right there, John. You know, so look, one of the issues is getting to the quarterback. The Giants really haven't done that. I mean, you know, they're going from one coordinator that blitzed the crap out of the ball and still didn't get many drops on quarterbacks. Now you've got a, a, diff, a guy coming in with Shane Bowen with a different philosophy. So what do you do? So, well, that kind of meets his philosophy, right? Shane's basically a four down rush guy. And now you add this guy, you know, with, with alongside talent. Like, like, like Brian says, hey, I got a bunch of dogs next to me, man. Dexter. You hopefully it's easy. You got Thibodeau, you know, all that stuff. So I like what he did. What I like about Joe is that, hey, I'm going to be aggressive if I want it, if I see something I want. And that's what he did. And and the beauty, like I said, dude, John, is that you still have a second round pick, you know, so that's big too. Yeah, that was that Leonard Williams trade that got him the extra pick. And basically the yeah. price they paid, the price they got rather for Leonard Williams is what they paid to get access to Brian Burns. So they, right. the, they, they kind of moved in concert. Obviously the picks are a little bit different. They're eight apart, uh, 47 versus 39, but still um, they add a guy. And now, you know, you mentioned how that defense can be special. How do you think uh, that Bowen defense is going to kind of come together? And what do you think it's going to look like for fans that are anxious to see uh, what a non wink Martindale defense looks like with this personnel? Yeah. yeah well, folks, I mean, you know, for you, for everybody who's been watching a lot of blitz in the last three years of Wink, well, you're not going to see a lot of that with Shane Bowen. Um, he's basically, you know, not that Shane doesn't is not going to blitz at all, but he believes in that four down four rush guy. You know, he wants to rush four and he wants to drop that seven and all that. So you're going to see a t t different type of defense, you know, and one of the reasons why, you know, you upgrade that edge guy, you know, when you could get to the quarterback with four guys, ooh, that's a big difference, you know. So that's that's the biggest thing. When Giants fans start watching this team in September, John, that's going to be the biggest, you know, you're going to look at guys guys like Winkle who, like, who love the, he'll run the zero blitz at times. He'll blitz six guys up front. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of that. You know, you're going to see a mix with Shane as far as cover twos, threes, you know, and all that stuff in um it's, it's, it's going to be a different philosophy, and guys are going to have to get used to it, but that's what they do. They're NFL players. They'll, they'll adjust to the new, the new scheme. And uh, But it's definitely going to be a different look, no question about it. And uh, Shane added a big piece to the, to the scheme Shane Bowen wants to run, and that's big. You know, that's big. You draft. You sign free agents, and free agency, uh, free agents to guys, the scheme that your core days want to run, right? And that's that's what Shane wants to do. And, and that Joe got him, went out and got him a big piece. All right, so let, let's stick on the defense here before we head over back to the offense with the other moves they made in free agency, Chris. Yeah. Where do you think the biggest holes now lie? Where are the biggest needs as you continue through this offseason you get to the draft on this defense, considering the way Bowen wants to run it? Yeah, well, I think corner opposite of Tate Banks is going to be one of them. You know, uh, I, I got to be honest with you, John, I was a, I'm a little surprised. You know, I know they brought Jalen Mills and he's like a safety now and all that stuff. He's a fan, he's up there, but I'm a little surprised a little surprised that Joe didn't address the cornerback in safety position with a veteran. Now I know Jalen Mills, but Jalen Mills saw his, his playing timing, you know, decreased in New England until the last few years. But anyway, so they're going to have to address that. I, I look at the corner spot. Now I'm not saying they have some young guys out there now. Okay. You got the Nick McLeod, you got the Cordell, that always a slot guy. You could throw him on the outside too and all that stuff. And, and you have the young Trey Hawkins going to be entering the second year. We all know was this training camp. He looked great in training camp last year. Then the regular season started, and it was a different story. Okay, which is which is we always seem to get one of those guys in training camp every year. But I'm not giving and by up. By the way, on Chris, training. I think every team gets one of those guys. Every, every team year. has that, them. That's, John. That's, the Giant fans don't realize it. Yeah. Every fan base has a couple players in camp. We're like, oh my gosh, the sixth round pick's gonna Absolutely. be great. And then oh, the real game started. Now it looks a lot different. 
John, absolutely. Because, you know, you, you look around the league during training camp and you read about, you know, the beat writers, what they're saying. And there's always one guy like they say, oh, this guy, you know, John Schmell looks great. And I'll always sit there like, well, wait till the bell rings in September, right? <laughs> so we kind of saw that with Trey. Not that I'm giving up on Trey. He'll be in the mix next year, be competing. But you ask Chris, me what position. He was a sixth round pick out of Old Dominion. The, but the idea that he was going to come in year one and be some kind of top end starter, it's yeah. not fair to the kid. I mean, yeah. he, he's a developmental prospect. You got to give him some time here. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, you know what happened. You know what happened, John. You're there every day too. He played so well in camp. Is that people? He opened up. Hey, look, and let's face it. I mean, he was he was season until he showed he could. You know what I mean? So until it was a little bit. You know, he was a little bit in over his head at the beginning. Of the year. But I'm not giving up on Trey. You know what I mean? He'll be his second year. He'll be in the mix and all that. But they're going to have to address, in my opinion, uh, they're going to have to address that cornerback position opposite of Deontay Banks. There's no question about it. Now, at safety, you know, you lose a guy like McKinney, who's obviously a very good football player, and you're going to, right now on paper, you got some young guys, you know, and, and you have the veteran Jalen Mills in the mix, too. So, those are two positions right now, in my opinion, that are kind of, they have holes, and they're going to have to be either via, there's still some veterans out there, uh, free agent market, and the draft, you know, and we'll see what Joe wants to do there. Um, now, on the inside, you got some young guys like Jordan Riley next to Dex and all that, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him go defensive lineman too in the draft, John, to bring another guy, you know. So, but the one that worries me right now, as we sit here in at the end of March, is going to be who's going to be opposite of Tay Banks. That's the one that concerns me right now. No, I'm with you. I agree. In terms of the defensive lineman, and I've we've had this debate on our programs here, Chris. Are you looking to add another run stopper next to Lawrence? Or are you looking for more of your upfield, smaller pass rusher type that you could put next to Dex? No, I think Dex has got. I want to see a guy that can really stop that run, John. You know, because this team has struggled against the run. You know, the last few years. So I like to see a big body there next to Dex. Dex could push that pocket. We all know that. But I love to see a guy. Look, I thought. You know, a guy like Gay Sean Robinson was doing a pretty decent job. Of course, we lost no. him, right? We lost him for this, this, these things happen, right? He came, I thought he really came on in the in the latter half of the year, and I wanted to see him stay, but it happens. You, know, you can't keep everybody, you know, so he moves on. He got a good deal. What are you going to do? You know, but yeah, I like to see, look, look. Now, could Jordan Riley, like a kid like Jordan Riley, be that guy, you know? Yeah, possible. You know, he'll be entering year two. You got Nacho back, you know, but. I still think they're going to address that in the draft. And if you ask, like you asked me, what would you rather see? I, I want to see a big kid that kind of clogs up those gaps, John. You know what I mean? That stops the run, you know, next to Dex. That's what I'm looking for. Interesting. See, I, I, I think Dex, as your kind of one technique, zero technique, depending on how Bowen wants to line mm -hmm. him up, right? I think then you need that three, which is more of your upfield guy to kind of replace what Leonard was before, mm -hmm. you know, he got traded to Seattle. So I think it's interesting because I think there are good arguments on both sides there, yeah. especially given the Giants' issues against the run. I totally get where you're coming from. I'll be curious to see, you know, especially Bowen and, you know, Joe Shane's point at the combine that he he wants guys that to get upfield into the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. I'm, cu I'm very curious to see how they view that second defensive tackle position, because I do think that there are good arguments on both sides of that. Yeah. You know, and you could look, look, what a healthy Aziz. Now you could, it'd be interesting to see how they mix this up. Right, John, as far as, okay. So now you got a third and seven and you got, you have a Brian Burns on one side, you got Tibbs on the other side, you got Dex. Hey, you do, you throw an Aziz on a three tech, right? You remember the old days where you kind of mix it up with the tuck and Ozzy and all those yeah. guys in the NASCAR, you know, a whole package. I'm not saying that's what the, the level of talent is, but I'm saying is that you could kind of mix them up up front. That's what I'm, Curious to see, you know, what Andre Patterson, defensive line coach, and Shane Bowen, what they do with these guys up front, how they mix, you know, you know, mix and match. Aziz to me is going to be very interesting, John, because a healthy Aziz is, is going to be, is right now healthy going into camp. Aziz is the second best pass rusher on his team behind Ryan Burns. All right? uh, I, was, I would say behind Burns and Dexter, but yes. Uh, John... Look, look at his, he's his number when he's healthy, man. The games he plays and the sacks, okay? So, but whatever, I'm not going to argue, you know, it's whatever, you know, but Aziz, <laughs> is a, Aziz is a guy that, you know, we all know, and I know people are going to be like, come on, Chris, he's never healthy. I get it. I know that. I'm talking about a healthy Aziz. So it'd be interesting to see how they mix and match with those guys up front. It really is to see what, Agreed. how they line I them up. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm with you. All right, let's jump to the offensive side of the ball and free agency, Chris. 
They had a couple of offensive linemen in, in John Runyon Jr. Yeah. and uh, Jermaine Illuminor. Then you also had guys like Aaron Schlotman, Aaron Stinney that are kind of depth pieces on the line. Yeah. And John Mara again made the point that uh, I think the quote was that it's ridiculous that we continue having these offensive line issues. He expects it to be better this year. Uh, and Joe Shane made the point too that you know obviously they're, they're they're trying to get that group better. Also, one of the pieces of news coming out of there that they're going to start uh, Evan Neal this offseason, keep him at mm-hmm. right tackle, which probably yeah. means Jermaine Illuminor will probably start inside a guard. Though Brian Dable did not commit, much like with the play calling, did not want to commit to who's playing what positions on that offensive line. So we'll have to wait till OTAs to see where they line up. Uh, to figure that part out. What do you think overall about how the Giants decide to address the the O-line in free agency? Yeah, look, and I like what Joe did, okay? Um, I felt they needed a upgrade in a pass pro guard, John. Um, I felt they really struggled in that last year at times, Pew, Brennison. And one thing that John Runyon Jr. gives you, okay, he's probably a Better pass pro guard than a run blocking guard. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. Remember, he was a left tackle in Michigan, so he yes. he, he knows how to pass protect. I mean, there's no question when you watch him on film and when you watch him when he played for the Packers, the way he attacks a pass pro, he he looks like a tackle, right? I mean, he strikes out with the hands. You know, he's not the most athletic guy with his feet and all that, but he's definitely an upgrade and something I felt they needed, and that's a guard that could pass pro well and he's no question John Runyon Jr. and he's got that nasty like his dad right like his dad he's kind of got that nastiness in the inside I like that John you know I like that I felt the Giants needed that so I like what Joe did uh obviously Jermaine uh Jermaine Illuminor I hope I'm saying that right now yeah, you um, got it good job okay thank you <laughs> I'm not I'm not exactly the best at pronouncing names too but I'm I'm fortunate enough to get that one right Jermaine is a guy that obviously we know he could play guard. He played guard a lot in Baltimore. He, he did it in his career. He has done it in his career, and he's a tackle, and he's played pretty, pretty, pretty good tackle. So Evan Neal, no question, you can't give up on Evan yet, okay? He's going to go into camp as a tackle. But you do have Jermaine now, and what I mean by that is this, John. It's year three for Evan, and he's had a lot of health issues. Don't get me wrong. But to me, John, this is going to be a short leash for Evan at the tackle position this season. I don't think if he struggles, okay, and that's not all Evan's fault. You know, he's had health issues and all that. But let's face it, John, he hasn't played like a seventh overall pick yet, hey, look, okay? Joe Shane said it in his postseason. Joe problem. said Evan it. Neal has to play better. Right. I'm not here getting on anybody. This is exactly what the Giants and the organization, that's just how the Giants feel. And Joe Shane said he has to get better. So they're going to give him a chance to get better, John. Okay, and it's going to be his position to lose. But I fully believe uh, believe that it will be a short leash on Evan Neal this year because you have a guy like Jermaine could slide right over and play right tackle. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, But it's nice to have look at even even a signing like Aaron Stinney. Okay, he's a guy that started and won a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Bucks. He played with them. You know, he's he's not a bad guard, a guy, a veteran. We all up. Nice, nice little pickup, nice depth guy. Guy goes down, you throw Ammon in there, right? So I kind of like what Joe did. Of course, they have to do it on the field. We all know that. But uh, I love the Jermaine Illuminor versatility because if Evan struggles again, there's no way, John, they are going to sit there, Dable and Shane. It would be malpractice to watch him sit there because he's a seventh overall pick and watch him struggle week after week. Um, I think he's on a short leash. I really yeah, think. I don't think any of those decisions will get made in the spring because they're not in pads yet. They're not. Oh no, absolutely not. I'm talking about regular season. Yeah. No, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I look. I think even if we get through like a couple preseason games and four mm-hmm. weeks of camp, and they see in one on ones in practice and stuff that Neil's mm-hmm. having some issues, I'm with you. I would not be surprised if we see a Luminar up. Maybe he'll get a couple snaps here, a tackle now and then, just to try to make sure they're ready. And when fringe he started, and this is why I love the Luminar signing so much. Again, not that he's going to be a, a pro bowl or an all pro or anything right, like that, but right, he's, he was a right. good, he was a starting caliber right tackle for the Raiders for, for two straight years under the Giants' current offensive line coach. So we know it's going to work. Okay. I had Michael and when you kind of circled when free agency started because right. he could play right tackle, he could play guard, he could do both. Right. Well, once they spent all the money on Brian Birds, allocating the amount of cap space you would need to get a guy like a when you became very difficult. So, they found the guy that was cheaper, but had the same profile, right? That could play right. tackle and can slide into guard. And to your point, I think it makes the the Evan Neal situation a lot easier to handle, knowing you have a stopgap 
or maybe even better than a stopgap. That's probably downplaying the way Luminor oh, played the last a, couple a years. Quality right tackle. Yeah. Correct. That can step in and play that spot if Neil doesn't play well enough to hold the position. And I just think that was, you know, finding a guy that could do that. Uh, I think was a really, really an underrated, important part of what the Giants did this offseason. John, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And, and I just, Giant fans should be excited about this new offensive line coach, Carmen Brasillo. And I'll tell you why quickly, John. My, Jermaine Illuminor said in his press to us about when he was a rookie, a first year, second year, he goes, I stunk. You remember when he said that? He, Chris, goes, he, I told, he told me in my interview that he stunk the first four years of his career. So, and I'm going to give you a quick story, John. Yeah. I remember when he played golf for the Ravens and and he was in there and I was watching him going, wow, I'm, I, I'm shocked Harbaugh's going with this guy and God. I remember, I never, I specifically <laughs> remember seeing that to myself, right? And then the last two years, I'm watching him with Vegas, John, especially last year. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that the same Jermaine Illuminor that I saw in Baltimore that yeah. couldn't block a guy? You know, I was like, wow. What you want to talk about an improvement? I was like, holy crap. And guess what, people? Well, that offensive line coach from the Dante Scott Nectia school, okay, is not a Giants offensive line coach. And it goes to show you how much an offensive line coach could really change a guy. And Jermaine, in my opinion, John, Jermaine Illuminor is one of those guys that you look at him and say, man, is that the same guy that was in the league three, four years ago? Look how much better he is. He is now a solid, like you said, John, do I think he's making Pro Bowls and all pros? No, but he is a solid right tackle. And that's something the Giants have now if Evan doesn't work out. What's up? I'm John Wall. And I'm CJ Toledano, and we're starting a new podcast presented by DraftKings called Point Game. Everyone, please welcome Coach John Calipari. We're getting beat by 18. My first game in Kentucky. They're saying, Cal's a bust. You can't coach. This is crazy. John Wall runs down the floor and makes a buzzer beater. Yep. You remember that, John? That's my first game win I ever made. Remember you said you never seen me do that. Ladies and gentlemen, DeMarcus Boogie Cousins. I called Boogie. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm about to commit to Duke. And I hung up on him. <laughs> Bro, I'm talking about, do you want to tell me how many times he called me all type of names? Bro, you really sold me out. You doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was sick. I remember that like yesterday, man. Love you, John Wall. Thanks, Coach. Love you, too. You made me everything I am today. Nah, you made me. You made me. I love it. Check out Point Game with John Wall and CJ Toledano on the iHeartRadio app, DraftKings YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. It wasn't even supposed to be That's my day. That's my day. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens. So go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? Giant fans love a winner. It's why they love citizens. Named a 2022 best bank in the U.S. by The Banker. As the official bank of the Giants and sponsor of the huddle, Citizens is made ready for fans of Big Blue. Learn more at citizensbank.com. Oh, actually, Chris, I forgot. Devin Singletary. That was one big offensive addition yeah. we did not talk about him for agency. I almost forgot him before we jumped to the draft here. Look, I watched this tape. I was really impressed by it. I think he's elusive. I like oh, his – I think his height actually helps him. It gives him good contact balance. Guys have trouble picking him up. Uh, he was just as productive as Saquon was in fewer carries last year. Now, obviously, playing – with CJ Stroud and uh, I think probably helped out a lot for Devin Singletary in Houston. I'm not saying he's as good of a player as Saquon Barkley by any means, but I think he'll step in here and I think he'll be a very solid starter for them. Oh, absolutely. It's a good running back, John. He's yeah. a good running back. Um, is he Saquon? No, of course not. But he does Saquon things where he, you know, he'll get you those yards. He's he's good with it. He has good hands, John. He, he'll get you catch, you know, he'll get you receptions. The only thing he's and lacking I, is that top end breakaway speed. That I means yeah, he, right, he, exactly. he can do everything else. Right, right. He's not a home one hitter, but he could do everything else. And and I and I know I know I might upset some Saquon fans with this, but he's a better pass pro running back than Saquon. Okay. Now Saquon did get a lot better about at that last I, year. Yes. Did, but, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm not even. I'm just saying. You know that wasn't Saquon's forte. Okay. Uh, you know he. You know you watch Singletary though, and he's a pretty good pass pro back. Now is he? Of course he's not Saquon Barkley. I'm not saying that, but he's a very good back. Obviously they're very familiar with Evan from Buffalo, um, but he's a guy that's going to give you yards. He's going to give you catches. Um, look, he didn't break. 
How much would he sign for, right? Not a guy signed for 10 million a year, 11 million a year. Nice price, nice price tag on for a very good player. Um, and I was, look, I think they had that lined up where they kind of knew John that Saquon probably wasn't going to be here again. And they had guys lined up and I was one of them for sure. All right, Chris, let's uh, jump over to the draft now uh, before we wrap this sucker up. Sitting there at six, we already kind of touched on the quarterback. You could circle back there if you want to. What are your overall thoughts here at number six? Uh, to me, you look at the at the group of skill position guys on this team now, Chris, and you're going to have a chance to get a guy who would be a top 10 wide receiver in any draft, whether it's Neighbors, whether it's a Dunze, whether, who knows, Marvin Harrison Jr. You never know who's going to be there um, at, yeah. at, at six when the Giants pick. Uh, I would have a hard time believing uh, – Given what Joe Shane and Brian Dable saw in Buffalo and how much Stefan Diggs addition helped that offense and their quarterback up there, that they would pass on one of those top wide receivers you know if what? they're sitting there at six and, and the whole quarterback thing doesn't work out. John, I couldn't agree with you more, bro. I mean, if, if the quarterback thing doesn't work for them, if it doesn't work out, I don't think there's any way. they. You know, John, I look at these. I've seen these three kids in college like you have, and I've watched a lot of tape on them. And I got to be honest with you, John. I look at Marvin and I look at Rome and I look at Malik Neighbors. And to me, these are three, I hate to say this because they haven't played a snap in the NFL, but these are three can't miss wide receivers, in my opinion. Guys that are going to come in and make an impact, put them on the X, and they're going to make an impact for you, man. I I, I look at them, I, I just love all three. And to me, there is no way. Look, Daniel Jones has not had a number one receiver since he's been here. Daniel Jones, people, is going to be the quarterback here in September. Whether you like it or not, he's going to be their quarterback, okay? The kid has never had a, a true number one receiver. Well, guess what, right, John? There's three of them right there. Three of them. And the Giants are going to have a pick on one. Hey, John, you know, a month ago, if I would have – me and you would have talked either, either via text or on your show, and I would have said, hey, you know, there's a shot they're going to get Marvin Harrison. You would have said, Chris, do me a favor. Stop drinking when you come on my shows. There's no chance of they getting Marvin Harrison. He's going to, well, guess what? A month later now, we're, we're still a month on the draft. Don't get me wrong. But there's a chance. There's a possibility the Giants could land Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, let me put it this way, Chris. <clears throat> two years or uh, two years ago now, right? If I would have told you when the Giants were picking at, it was five and seven, right? The Thibodeau Neal year. Yes, five that, and seven. At this time that year, we thought Thibodeau, had a good chance of being either the f the first or second defensive end taken, and Neil mm -hmm. was going to be the first offensive tackle taken. Mm -hmm. If I told you those guys would have been available at five and seven that year, you would have told me I was crazy. Yeah, I would have said you were nuts. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are, John. Here we are a month away. And the way it's shaping up, the way J.J. McCarthy's stock has is rising, you could have the first four picks, you know, if Arizona trades out, quarterback. And, and the you know, market is going to be so hot, too, because the Raiders, the Broncos, the Vikings, what? they're all going to be bidding for that pick. Absolutely. And the Vikes have two number ones to play with. OK, so they're going to be very aggressive. Kevin O'Connell is going to be very aggressive. OK, they're going to. And if they have J.J. a top four grade now, like I said, like we talked about the beginning of this. Right. We don't know how these guys, have, how these teams have these guys graded. But say argument's sake, they have J.J. a top four grade. OK. Or or even J even JJ goes third and they have Jaden Daniels up top four, whatever. Guess what? The draft really starts at pick five now. Okay? With the charges. The first four could go quarterbacks and not a so what do the charges do? Well, they guess what? They got Justin Herbert. They might say, Well, we're not passing up on a Joe Wall. Hey, you know what? We need the, you know what? We feel Brock Bowers is a difference maker for Justin Herbert and that and our offense. Okay, we're gonna go with him at five. Okay. We don't know. That's the point I'm at. I mean, do you, do you realize I'm Marvin Harrison Jr.? And in my opinion, John, this is just my opinion, he's still the best receiver in this draft, okay? Okay? Can, do you now realize that Marvin Harrison Jr. could fall into the Giants' laps at six if Joe isn't aggressive moving up or, they don't, if, they, or if they don't go quarterback or how it plays out? I'm just talking about hypothetical, okay? Marvin Harrison Jr. could be a Giant. If not, John, you look at him, Malik Neighbors, you look at Roman Dunze, dude, I've seen these guys. You've seen them. They're so impressive, John. This, to me, they come in from day one, and they're making an impact. Impact. You put them on the X, and there you go. There's your number one. And all of a sudden, the Giants have a pretty damn good receiving group. Right? For yeah, day. because I think all those guys would elevate what Hyatt and Wanda Robinson oh, and Slayton can do, right? It, it just makes it easier for those other three guys. 
Absolutely. And if Darren Wall is back, it makes it easier for him too. Okay. Um, so, hey, that's, I don't think there's any way, John, that if the quarterback thing doesn't work out, they don't go with uh, a wide receiver at number six. Um, that's my opinion, bud. Could you, if it's not a receiver, hmm. what else could you sell to Giant fans as being a logical move? Uh, obviously, an offensive line and a tackle then. I, I I think that you look at if, if they don't go wide receiver, then you get your tackle and then you take it from there. Uh, offensive line, well, you know, right? Because that's something obviously they haven't had a good offensive line in a long time. And if, if they don't go receiver route, then obviously they have a guy like, let's say, I'll give a second, like Joe Walt or the kid from Penn State or the other grade it up there and they say, okay, we'll get this kid in here. Okay, we're going to we're gonna upgrade this offensive line and we'll, we'll work out the right tackle, all that stuff, all that down the road. But um, but I, I, I tell you what, John, <laughs> call me crazy, man, but I also will not, it would not shock me. Say they don't go wide receiver, quarterback, the whole deal. They got the, they're sitting there at six. It would not shock me for Brock Bowers. No, nah, there we go. That's what I like. A wild card. I, I, I'm telling you, John, if, at, when I'm, if I'm sitting in the media room that Thursday night and the Giants, go Brock Bowers at six. I'm not going to sit there and go, what? What are you effing? No, I'll be like, okay. You know, I, it would not shock me. I think personally, like you just asked me, I think it's wide receiver, no question. But the wild card, like you just said, <laughs> Brock Bowers. Yeah. Okay. And, and we'll see what happens with Darren Waller. Obviously there's still some, you know, mystery regarding that. Don't know what's so going on. Him. We'll yeah. see what happens. And Brock Bowers is an excellent football player. I, I think, I would have trouble picking him over one of those wide receivers, I think, but I think it's interesting. I agree. All right, day two. What, what, what would you be your focus, Chris, in terms of trying to fill those needs? I imagine, yeah. given our previous conversation, yeah. the secondary would mm -hmm. and the defensive tackle would would yeah. would would probably be your two big focuses. Absolutely, I think cornerback in that second round, John, is something that has to be looked at. Safety in the middle rounds, defensive line, another defensive line, and another guard. Look, another you have six picks. Okay, bring in another guard. You know, your fourth round, uh, you know, whatever it might be, you know, bring, in some, bring another young kid in here on the offensive line, right? Uh, but to me, John, that second round, you have to seriously look at cornerback, you know, and, and there's some good corners. There, yeah. There's some good corners in the second and third round, you know, and, and that are going to be out there. And to me, you have, since they didn't address it in free agency, right, John, you always got to, free agency always kind of dictates a little bit what they're going to do in the draft, right? That kind of, not everything, not everything, but it kind of dictates what they're going to do. Well, they haven't signed a cornerback, okay? Um, in free agency, at least yet. They haven't brought in a guy. Um, so to me, that second round, you got to get that up other corner, okay? And then obviously safety in, in the rest of the rounds. You know, I like to see a defensive lineman, and I like to see another guard in here. How about a running back? You know... <sighs> And once look in the middle round, running back wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, fourth, Absolutely fifth round, not. something like that. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise. Look, how many how many good backs have been taken third round, fourth round? I mean, I mean, holy crap! We've had a guy that was taken in the seventh round as one back to back Super Bowls, and you know, it's been part of a back to back Super Bowl team in Pacheco. You know, so no, but that wouldn't surprise me either. Um, but I think that cornerback is a position that second round they have to focus in on John and try to get that guy opposite of Tay. Awesome. All right, Chris, anything else that you think we missed that, 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 that you want to touch on Giants offseason-wise that, that you think we should touch on before we say goodbye? No, I think we covered it, buddy. Um, it's going to be a fast thing what they do. You know, obviously, look, we know, John, we discussed it here. Um, quarterback is something they're very interested in, and it's going to be interesting to see how if they, could, if they do draft one, if they're aggressive, if they move up and all that. So to me, that's obviously what I think of all the Giant Nation is keeping in mind. What the hell do they do? Do they go out and draft a quarterback April 25th? So that that's going to be the fascinating question, buddy. And it'll be about a month or so of people it, wringing their answer. hands about what they're going to do. So it should be fun. <laughs> uh, you can keep track of all that with Giants Insider. Also, of course, Giants.com, the Giants mobile app. Chris Bizignano from Giants Insider. Chris, we appreciate the time, my friend. Enjoy the next few weeks. And uh, we'll see you at the pre-draft press conference in a couple yeah. weeks when Joe Shane manages to tell us nothing over the course of 30 minutes. <laughs> it'll, it'll be a great time for everybody. <laughs> John, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me back on, buddy. We'll talk soon. Uh, join us on the next John Settle podcast brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. For Chris, I'm Schmelk. We'll see you next time.
Introducing the Lisa Chill Collection, your answer to hot nights. These mattresses beat the heat with ultra-cool covers, whisking away heat for the perfect sleep temperature. Save up to $460 on chill mattresses and get two free pillows when you shop now. iHeart listeners can save an extra $50 off by visiting lisa.com forward slash iHeart. That's l-e-e-s-a dot com slash iHeart. Exclusions apply. See lisa.com for more details. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. Get Cox Internet powered by fiber with America's fastest download speeds. It's Internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ucalypt speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. USQ3 2023.